Hello and welcome to the Pitt Post Game Show here at the Peterson Event Center. The Pitt Panthers have defeated Notre Dame Fighting Irish 70-60. to Myself, Chris Carter, with here with Noah Hiles, our Pitt beat writers here at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, breaking down this game, the good, bad, and the ugly, as always. Remember to watch this show on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of our daily content that comes out from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Also a reminder, this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to Mike's Beer Bar today and experience one of their 500 different available beers. 300 of those beers are from the local area. 80 of those local beers are available on tap. More on them later. Noah... I thought this was one of the more confident pit wins of them beating up a on a on a lesser team that we've seen in the that it was a power five team. Yeah, and that's how it should have been. I mean, this is this is a team that I mean, I've seen them play Louisville and Notre Dame in person. I don't see a lot of a gap between those two. Uh, I think Louisville gets still the brunt of it just because it's been so bad recently. But I, I don't think that this is a much better team that Pitt beat today. Uh, it was a nine and a half point favorite. It won by ten points. You know, you should beat these teams by ten or more. That's that's what should happen here. I think the bigger takeaway for me for this one is this is four wins in five games, and that's my good. Is the trend is finally pointing upward? Uh, after the Duke game, the big question was: Was this just a flash in the pan, or they, can they turn something into the, or can they make something from this? And really, as Blake kind of pointed out, although you know a little bit upset by you know, the by the way he pointed it out, but uh, you know this is a team that is a one missed foul call away, arguably, or one you know one two points shy, really, uh, one big basket away from winning five in a row and having a winning record in the ACC and, and really possibly being back on the bubble if you look at it. And and I still think this team has to do a little bit more before it's seriously on the bubble, but if you looked at where this team was a month ago and now you compare it to where it currently stands, I mean, next week it could be a little closer. And then you look at what it has to do and it's next two games, really, with NC State and then Virginia, two teams that are fighting on the bubble as well. Two more wins. This team's back in the conversation. And I didn't even think that was a possibility. And again, you got to go out and win those games. But the fact that it has been able to take care of business against a couple of good teams like Duke and Wake Forest and beat teams that it's supposed to beat, like Georgia Tech on the road. And play- the supposed to beat them. Exactly. Uh, like Jeff mentioned, playing well defensively against one of the better offensive teams in the league, Wake Forest. Playing better offensively against or or offensively excuse me against one of the better defensive teams in the conferences in Notre Dame uh they're getting the job done and they're winning how they're designed to win in these specific matchups so that's my good is it's trending upward I don't think this team's hit its peak yet uh that's what Blake said and that's what Jeff Capel said after the game as well uh but things are looking good what's your good my good is how they got this this win, and I thought it was really that they shot the ball well. They got to their offense a lot faster in this game. They still came out. It started off like a rock fight, and it was I was like, this is the one thing they needed to avoid, and Notre Dame had the game right kind of where it wanted. You know, was, they're up 7, 19, 12 with like five minutes to go in the first half, and you're sitting there thinking like, oh, boy, is Pitt going to mess this one up? And then Bub Carrington hits one three-pointer, and then everything starts clicking. Blake Henson starts hitting three-pointers. Ishmael Leggett's driving, driving to the paint, creating. Jalen Lowe wasn't hitting shots, so what was he doing? He was getting assists. He was he was, he was was creating for others. And I thought that was the really good sign was that I think if this game happens a month and a half ago, Pitt still wins, but it's by like a, it's coming down to the final like two possessions. Whereas this one, this was over at about like the three-minute mark, and then like Notre Dame did some things to try to like get it closer. But – this was a game, like you said, they won the way they needed to win, and that was by shooting well, performing well, executing your offense, getting to your spots. That's something Pitt, I don't think, did enough against the lesser teams on its schedule earlier in the season. If they had done that more, maybe they win a couple more games, and they're and they're and maybe they're on the bubble right now. Uh, but this is a good sign that they were able to do this. And again, like Notre Dame, they know that they, they can't score on offense, so they have to play good defense. And they and they, they, they came in allowing the second fewest points in the ACC, I think the third best uh, uh, field goal percentage as far as defenses. So to do that against them, they that's just the sixth team to score 70 on them th- this year. I think that deserves a, a tri- tribute there. But I'll, dive, I'll switch that to my bad. It's just, oh boy, how bad was that Notre Dame offense? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's – do you want to talk about that? Because I have a different bad. 
Uh, oh. I, 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 was, I was just asking you to chime in. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're bad. I mean, they they rank dead last in the ACC in pretty much every major category. Three-point shooting percentage, field goal percentage, uh, field goal percentage field goal percentage, just points per game, uh, assist turnover ratio, turnover margin. I could keep going, Chris Carter. But, no, they're terrible. And, and the, the point being that, like, I remember covering some pit teams that Jeff had just a few years ago before yeah. that crew came in, and, like, some of the things you saw offensively remind me of that. And uh, it was a, just a really bad bad look for them. And, and it became a thing. Like, it was if Pitt could just hit its shots and execute its offense – to like the basic, the normal average level that I think it, it can, Notre Dame can't keep up with that. And you saw that. I mean, there were just some of the passes, some of the turnovers were just so bad. And you said if Pitt can hit its shots. Yeah. And that's where we get into my bad was just they started horrible from the field. 0 of 9 for their first nine three-pointers. They went another five-minute stretch without scoring. And again, when you're going against Notre Dame, a team that averages 62 points a game, you can do this. You can get away with it. But it's not going to work against NC State. It's definitely not going to work on the road at Virginia. These are things that you still have to address if you're pit. And while, yes, they managed to survive a stretch like this, actually two stretches like this, against Wake Forest earlier in the week, this is a trend that is not going to be sustainable. And, you know, there's no other answer to it than just making shots. And the looks are there. You can't wait 15 minutes to get warmed up in a game. And that's been the last three games really now for Pitt where their offense was just ice cold. And granted, not long ago, it was ice cold for 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's making some progress, but you've got to cut that down even further. What's your bad? Uh, bad being the uh, the penetration that they allowed. Yes. Because, man, that was that was part of the problem. Carl, Bub Carrington fouled foul out in this game. A large part was because that they were not doing a good job early on cutting off those drives. Uh, and some of the fouls were just normal in-game fouls. But, man, the fact that they were able to drive on them, and Jeff even talked about it after the game, like, hey, uh, there were uh, you know, there were, there were things we had to do that we, that we planned on that we didn't do correctly. They had to call a timeout, and guys weren't understanding personnel switches. Guys weren't understanding who to, who to call out or who to jump out and cover because they were shooters. He said there were non-shooters that they were doing that to, and that was creating driving opportunities for, for players. And um, that hadn't been a problem I'd seen much for Pitt this year. That was one of the things that you normally they handled well was you didn't just drive to the paint on them. If you, you could bully their bigs a little bit. You could hit from outside, but they took away the drive. And if if Pitt if that if that becomes a problem in future games and Bob Carrington fouls out of a game against a good team that they face, that could be a problem. So that's my bad. So we'll move on now to the ugly. Uh, not a lot of ugly for Pitt, just yeah. a lot of ugly for Notre Dame. We we just talked about the offense. I don't think we need to really get into that a little bit more. The other ugly was just the 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 attitude of Micah Strewsbury. Uh the most dejected coach I've covered in a post game presser this year. Uh, by bar none. I mean, he, it, I, I asked after he left the podium, I asked the other writers, I'm like, was there like a steel cage match that just incur uh, occurred in their locker room after the game? It makes you wonder. And I'm not reporting anything that happened like that. That's just me making a joke. But I mean, it, it was, you could tell it's hard times right now in South Bend, Indiana for him. And that, you know, he's got a really big uphill climb before there's a smile on his face more often than not in post-game pressers. Yeah, um, like you said, that I ain't seen someone that defeated in a long time. I mean, it just he didn't like when he came in, he sat down and he I saw he was looking down. Like he didn't look at us as reporters for I think like the first two minutes of his conversations. Like I, I think I asked him the first question, didn't even look in my direction. I think it took about three questions before he started looking up again. And that's where I was like, Whoa, man, that guy that guy's beaten. And listen, it's tough. Like when you're in basketball season, when you're just getting your butt kicked week after week, game after game and you're trying to keep a team together and they're frustrated, it, it, it is an emotional drain. And Jeff Capel knows about that. I've covered Jeff Capel when they've been struggling. I remember after an NC State game where they lost and there was a bad call at the end. I was the only time I ever heard Jeff cuss, and he, he, he called he called the, the foul BS, and he was he was that frustrated. And so, I mean, I, I've, I've seen that before, but Notre Dame's in a rough spot. It was just ugly what they were going through, ugly on, on their offense, ugly everything on, on, on that part. I think that uh, you know they got a couple good players on their team, but as a whole, they're just in a really bad place. But hey, 
Pitt's been there before, so uh, I don't think Pitt fans are, are weeping for anybody right now. You know who's not ugly? Are the fine folks over at Mike's Beer Bar. Yes, Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Uh, you got to go to Mike's Beer Bar today. Over 20 televisions. So if you want to go there for your Super Bowl party, it's the best place to go. 500 different available beers, 300 local beers, 80 of those local beers available on tap and you can do that while also enjoying great food like steak on a stone or steve seafood on a stone they bring you those meats right on a heated stone each piece you cut off you press into the stone you choose how well done you want each piece you want each piece cooked and it's amazing you got to go to mike's beer bar today we're always there trying out new beers and they're always bringing new ones in every week go to mike's beer bar today for the best bar in pittsburgh when you tell when you get there tell them chris and noah sent you we'll be back wednesday night for the pit post game show as pit will be playing nc state and what is a, a big game Game for Pitt and a team in NC State that normally gives Pitt a lot of fits. But don't don't forget to check out the Pitt Mailbag Show. That'll also be out Tuesday. We'll get you ready ready to look in there. And who knows? Maybe we'll have some interesting people to talk to for Pitt football this week. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. We, we don't know. I won't be talking to anyone. I'll be That's true. Yeah, this man's on the road. I'll be here in Pittsburgh. We'll see you again here on the Pitt Post Game Show from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.